An architect is not somebody who can take that responsibility and say, look, I know it all and I guarantee it will be fine. My name is Paul Kalkov and I'm Head of Technical Design at Foster & Partners and I've been there for over 30 years after studying in Delft. If you look at construction and you see how construction has developed over the years from a sort of craftsman-based skill to one which is factory-based, it is about repetition of identical items which were then catalogue items. So you look it up in the catalogue, you order and you can only get what is in the catalogue. We're now in the age, and, and, in, and that obviously doesn't apply to the entire construction industry, but some parts of the construction industry have intelligent machines, eh? computer-controlled cutters, computer-programmed material, product uh, assembly lines. And there it doesn't, it is not so much a matter of things being exactly the same size, it is as long as they are of the same relationships, so they're more families of, of elements. When you have a complex shape building, you're going to get things that look the same, perhaps triangle, everything is triangulated, but they're not all necessarily of the same shape. But the relationships between the triangles are similar. Innovation is not always cheaper. But it is obviously possible to have an element which in itself is more expensive but saves you money by being able to build quicker, by being able to build lighter or because it's stronger or it will last longer. Maintenance costs and life cycle costs are real costs and therefore uh, the, the apparent paradox of having something that is more expensive that saves you money is actually a, a way, a good way of doing innovation. A lot of clients are interested in this being at the forefront of buildings. They want to sort of say this is a building of the future. The architect may be at the forefront of what he wants to achieve. You cannot do it all by yourself. You need to work with the best people suited for your job. If you're doing something fairly standard, you can do it with most people. If it's only been done or twice in the world, it's better to get those people who've done it before. There are forms of contract which allows contractors to participate in the design. An architect is not somebody who can take that responsibility and say, look, I know it all and I guarantee it will be fine. In my time here as visiting professor, I've been, been involved with the AMC project, which, which is, is quite, it's very interesting and, and quite a challenge of what to do with a building which needs, uh, at this stage of its life, it's probably 30 to 40 years old, and needs to be upgraded. And to resolve and to give existing buildings a future is obviously quite a key aspect of circularity. If we, if we want to reduce the amount of waste of materials and certainly energy, we've got to reuse buildings. And obviously you raise bigger and bigger questions then about if I upgrade the facade, surely that will have an impact on the inside. If I, if I stop the heat loss to the outside, if I do nothing else, I get a building that just gets hotter and hotter on the inside. Then I would need to cool it, which is crazy. So I think you cannot separate the skin from the inside and it's almost beyond anybody's comprehension of how to tackle it and what is the best way of doing it. My word of advice for the students here would be obviously you need to learn skills and techniques and, and which are the tools of working but uh, I think what I've learned and I'm sure that's still the case you got to learn how to solve a problem. If you've got a met methodology of how to solve problems, then you are well set up to tackle any new type of project eh, or problem that comes your way. Mm -hmm.